Are you guys ready to talk the Game Awards? We're about to go live with Q&A. Drop some questions in the chat here in 40 seconds. And we'll chat all things TGA as we get ready for the live show coming up this Thursday, live on every platform out there. We've got a big show for you, and hopefully I can tell you a little bit about it today. We'll see what's possible. We're busy making the show, so we're not going to be able to say super late, but I will take your questions in chat, so drop some questions in the chat, and we are going to go right into talking all things Game Awards here in five seconds. Boom. There you go. Hello, everybody. It's Jeff Keeley. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we are very busy over here working on the Game Awards, so uh, I don't know how long I can do a Q&A today, but I did want to stop by and chat with you guys and tell you a bit about our plans for Thursday. I can't believe we're four days away from the Game Awards now. Uh, so the set is being built and constructed and we're in rehearsals. Uh, it's it's Even though the show is in four days, it takes us almost two weeks to put this show together in terms of actually building the set and the staging and everything for it. People don't always realize how much time it takes, but everything's under construction and we're rehearsing now and getting ready and we've got, you know, the orchestra coming in for rehearsals, we've got special guests, we've got a lot of technical things we have to work on, so we're getting ready for our big live show, but it does happen this Thursday, uh, live everywhere, of course, on Twitch and YouTube and Twitter and TikTok and everywhere we're going to be streaming, so I encourage you, hopefully, to tune in and get ready for the show. Um, it's going to be a fun show. We announced today some of the first details. Uh, I'm very excited that Gonzo from The Muppets will be joining us to present an award. Uh, I love The Muppets. Uh, I've always loved The Muppets, and the past couple of years we've had uh, we've had a lot of fun working with The Muppets on the show. You may remember Animal was with me last year. Uh, in the pandemic, we had the Swedish Chef, and then we had Bunsen and Beaker and Pepe. I guess this is like four or five years of the Muppets. So uh, very excited about that, that Gonzo will be with us. And Christopher Judge, who won Best Performance last year, uh, he will be back to present an award. So we announced those two. And the other thing I did this morning was I revealed my hype trailer uh, for the Game Awards. Every year I put together a trailer which features a bunch of footage of the nominees uh, set to a piece of music, and it really kind of helps me get in the in the headspace of what the show is going to be about. Uh, and this year, it's set to a song by Radiohead called "Optimistic" off uh, Kid A, which is an incredible album that they did way back in the day. Uh, so I, I edit that and I put that together myself personally, just because I really want to kind of figure out what the the theme and the tone will be um, of the show. So I actually have it here for you. You guys may have seen it because it's been posted everywhere. But I thought before I get into some questions, I'm going to try and run it for you here if I can figure out how to make this work. Um, not sure I will. I usually have an amazing team and crew behind me that puts all these things together, and I gotta do it this way, but I think I queued it up before I came in here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so I think this is gonna be the hype trailer. Get ready, guys, and then I'll answer some questions after this. Look into the fire. It will warm you, but left unchecked, it will consume everything in its path. Why does fate seem always to conspire against us? I know what you say. A hero is someone who doesn't give up. If you don't there's hope for the world, why bother going on? I mean, you gotta try, right? All you need do is your best. Link, you are our final hope. I think I'm gonna give up that easy. But I must keep trying. Maybe you will make it through this time. It's time someone gave me a straight answer here. This is the next generation of entertainment. If you know it's working, you just need to keep going. And when hope has been whittled down to the very marrow of despair, that's when you'll come knocking on my door. You're gonna heal the world. Can you join me in the fact-based universe just once? I see a man. <laughs> 
I sense a beast. Do you yield? Looming doom is an issue, but why not enjoy the benefits while we can? Very smooth. You don't know what you took from me. Get it off of him! People can change, right? You put my family in the horror story? This is the greatest plan ever! I can't do this without you! Without me, you would have no victory. Now who's gonna stop me? You know the truth. Trust in me. It's time to find out who I are, once and for all. It's you. You're the one who's been guiding us? Alright, so that was the hype trailer for Game Awards, which is coming up this Thursday, four days away. I can't believe it. Uh, we have a lot to do to uh, get ready for the show, but I thought I'd take a couple questions uh, now about the show. Uh, uh, a couple things to tell you is that, uh, yeah, we'll have lots more announcements this week about um, presenters and musical performances and other things that are happening at the show, so we'll, we will be sharing some of that uh, this week. We're probably going to tease fewer games that'll be at the show because I think, I think, I, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I believe that we probably have more kind of new game announcements than normal in our show and that most of the games we have in the show are kind of unannounced things. Um, there obviously are existing games that we will uh, show more on, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we just won't tease or talk about um, in advance of the show, so you just have to start tuning in on Thursday, uh, which I'm excited about. I think hopefully there'll be some stuff that will surprise you. You always cross your fingers that, uh, you know, not going to make any kind of crazy leaks or anything leading into Thursday. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of great stuff to share with you uh, in the show, so uh, a lot of the game stuff will be under wraps until we, we have the live show, but we will share a little bit more on some presenters and uh, music and things like that in the coming days. And it's going to be here before you know it, right? Uh, four days out, and uh, our team is, is very excited. There's just a lot to do and a lot to figure out in the next couple of uh, couple of days. All right, so let's go to some uh, questions. If you guys want to drop them, I'm on the Twitch chat uh, in terms of being able to kind of share stuff. So uh, let's, let's do this to the featured chat and see what I can tell you about our plans for the show. Um, why is that not showing up? Hmm. Well, let's see. I was trying to call these things up, but it's not showing them. All right. Well, I'm just going to read them. How about that? And they're actual questions. You guys hopefully will believe it. Um, let's see. Okay. So let's start. Um, Will Imagine Dragons perform Children of the Sky from Starfield? Uh, no, they will not be performing that. We love the Imagine Dragons guys, and they've done the show twice before, um, but that's not one of the performances uh, we are doing this year. Cool song, um, but yeah, just uh, not uh, a track that's uh, coming together for uh, this show. Good question. Um, will there be a TGA sale on PSN and Xbox Live like in previous years, asks uh, Shay on 26? There will. Uh, that'll be coming up this week. I think probably Thursday you'll you'll get details on that. But yeah, same thing on Steam and the, the console platforms. You'll be able to uh, get some discounts on games, I believe. We don't, we're don't. we not really involved in the discounts, but we know the, the, the sales are happening. So hopefully there's some good discounts. It's been an amazing... Uh, amazing year. Um, Ali wants to know, will more presenters be announced this week? Yes, we'll definitely be announcing more this week. And of course, we'll, we'll save some surprises for you as well. Um, scale of one to 10, how big are the reveals this year at TGA? Boy, that's a really dangerous question. Having done this for a long time, I know that a 10 for me might be a six for you and a three for someone else. And oftentimes, I think these shows, it comes down to Usually, like one or two announcements, um, if, you know, in a show can make all the difference between like a one and a ten um, to certain people. So, very hard for me to say. Uh, I feel I generally feel good about what we're doing this year. Um, I think we've got a lot of cool stuff. We've got a lot of new games, new teams, new worlds. You're going to see. You know, this year game of the year is six established franchises, uh, and they're awesome games, really good, but they're kind of sequels or you know franchise extensions. Um, and I think it's really important that our industry does have new worlds and 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 new things coming out. So I think I'm really excited about some of the new things that we're going to show you kind of throughout the show this year, uh, which are things you you don't know exist probably, so you can't kind of anticipate them or, or get hyped about them. But I hope when you see them, you'll get excited um, about them. So that's something I feel really good about this year. We have a very global um, group of games that we're showing from places kind of all around the world, which I'm excited about. Um, so yeah, I think you know the. 
announcements are always difficult in that, you know, I've said this before, we don't make the game, so we're kind of, uh, you know, we're at the, the mercy of the game companies and what they want to do, when they want to do them. Sometimes there are things we want that aren't ready or are doing other things, and it's, uh, you know, it's always hard to predict sort of what the reaction is going to be to the show. We just kind of do the best show that we can. I think it's a really, you know, just going over some of the script stuff today, and I, I feel pretty good about um the show and the content and the, the the games we have, some of the things we're doing on stage with the performances, they're going to be truly epic this year, which I'm excited about. We've got the orchestra. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Every show is different for me. And, I, you know, this will be our 10th Game Awards. Uh, so when I look back, it's like, what was, you know, the reveals in 2019, what were they on a scale of 10? I don't know. I mean, we've had some amazing moments over the years. And sometimes games will surprise us. Um, things we didn't think were going to be big, you guys are going to go nuts for. Uh, so that's kind of the fun of this, right? As we all collectively kind of watch all this stuff. We have a lot of games. It's a, it's a big show um, with a lot of stuff in it. So, And the thing that we're also trying to do is pace out the reveals so not everything's not going to be at the beginning. I think some of our strongest stuff actually will be kind of in the middle or late in the show. Um, and I think hopefully there'll be sort of a good sense of pacing and that we've got some really cool things that we're saving towards the end of the show as well, um, to share with you. So, uh, yeah, who knows? And, you know, I work on that with our team and we don't always get it right. So, um, things are still changing and moving around in the show even today and tomorrow. So, um, I don't know. So I'm, I'm not trying to cop out of the question. I just, I don't, I can't give you a number because my number is going to be different than your number, if that makes sense. But it's a good question. Um... Let's see. Uh, Jeff, are you going to be bumping up the stage security this year? Yeah, someone asked me this, I think, last week on our streaming. Yes, we have kind of an enhanced security plan around the show. Um, it's obviously not something that we kind of publicly talk about or detail because it is security uh, and the things we don't want to necessarily uh, surface and talk about. But, yeah, we're obviously very conscious of um, security, and uh, we hope it's going to be, you know, more than anything, uh, you know, more than the reveals or the awards, we just we hope it's going to be a really, you know, great, um, you know, safe, fun event for everyone that's in the audience, but also watching online and things like that. So, um, yeah, thank you for your concern. And I, I really hope it's going to be a, a special night for all of us uh, that, you know, tune in and get excited about it. Um, Ten years is crazy. Got anything pretty big planned this year? You know, people sometimes ask me that of like, oh, it's the 10th year. What are you doing? And next year is our 10th anniversary. Um Nothing in particular. I mean, I think we have a great show, um, but no, it's not like we're doing a retrospective of 10 years or doing anything kind of especially different. Um, it's an awesome to have kind of an anniversary year. Next year will be an anniversary year too. So we always debate of like the 10th show versus the 10th anniversary, right? Because, you know, next year's 10, 10th anniversary. So we're turning 10 years old. This is our 10th show, um, but 9th anniversary. Funny how that works, right? Um but so I don't know exactly how it's going to play out next year either. But no, uh, it's largely kind of the show you would expect. Um, we're not doing anything drastically different in terms of the content because of the year. But we're all proud of it. And I'll, I will probably mention it or something in the script. Um, but no, it's not going to be any kind of special, um, you know, 10-year, uh, um, you know, segment or something like that in the show. Good question, though. And stuff something we've definitely talked about it. Um, let's see. Um... Have you ever thought about doing a worldwide tour for TGA to give people a chance to attend in person, asks Minsky42. Yes, I've talked about that before. I would love to maybe do TGA in like Tokyo or London or places like that. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen anytime in the next couple of years just because it's so expensive to do our show and so many of our people are in LA and to do it internationally is hard. We do Gamescom in Europe, uh, Gamescom opening that live in, in August, which we like to do. So I would love to do that at some point, but I, you know, I don't know when that's going to be, but it's definitely on my kind of hit list of things we'd like to do at some point um, with the show. So great question. Um, uh, oh, here's good. Here's a nice question from K4 PPA. Uh, the trailer was a masterpiece. Jeff, can you talk a bit about the process to make it and the process to select the scenes from the games? Well, sure, I can talk a bit about it. Um, you know, for me, those trailers, uh, they're very personal. And even though my team probably doesn't want me working on them, I love making them. Uh, and it's kind of part of what I do is my sort of journey to, to the show. I started making those back in 2015 at the second show. I started editing a trailer. Uh, if you remember the piece in 2015, I think Aaron Paul narrated it from Breaking Bad. Um, and that was something. Actually, I did one in 2014. Straight so every year I've done something. Sometimes they used to air in the show, and now we release them kind of ahead of the show. Um, but yeah, I guess I've always done it as part of Game Awards, so it's kind of been a tradition for me. Uh, so it starts with 
it usually starts with the song, thinking of kind of what um, the song and the theme. And I listen to a lot of music. I go to a lot of live shows and concerts. So I want to say probably in August or September, I kind of zeroed in on potentially doing something with Radiohead. I have a playlist on Spotify of kind of songs I'm thinking about and themes. So um, I kind of zeroed in a couple songs that I was thinking about and, and Optimistic from Radiohead was kind of what I was like, mm, it could be cool to do something with that song. And I think that the theme of, optimism and and trying and 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 the ongoing nature of, of of games and the challenges we face in them i just thought it was kind of a good just a good theme to think about given sort of the state of the world and the state of the industry so i approached radiohead and you know they don't really often approve their music for a lot of uh other uses and advertising uses um but i spoke to the band and they were um they were kind of you know familiar with the gaming industry because they had done a project with um Epic, I don't know if you saw this sort of Kid A exhibition that they did with Epic Games a couple years ago. Um, so it was fun, and I got to uh, call him from the band. I actually got to hang out with in New York um, a couple months ago and, and chat about sort of games and things like that. So anyways, I asked them if they would consider doing it, um, and they said yes. And so then I worked with my friend Martin, um, who all does the kind of remixes or reworks of the, the songs that you hear in a lot of our trailers. He did one for Nine Inch Nails. He's been working with me for, I don't know, six or seven years. Um, so he kind of started working on what we could do with that song and kind of in the movie industry, they call it trailerizing the music, kind of adding some more drums and kind of other elements around it, um, to manipulate it. So, uh, we worked on that and then, yeah, once the music is set, then I start to think about kind of the story that I want to tell. Um, and you know, a lot of the scenes are scenes that I actually played yeah, I play when I play through these games especially on my ps5 I often play them and I'll I can they're easy to kind of capture scenes and kind of capture the fa past 15 or 30 seconds of gameplay so when I'm playing through I'll kind of clip a bunch of scenes and games as I'm playing them um think about sort of themes and ideas and then I watch um you know I, I don't play every game so I also watch a lot of like um YouTube playthroughs of games as well sometimes and kind of just get a sense of certain cut scenes and moments and things like that uh and yeah I kind of pull all these kind of ideas, you know, kind of together. And then I just start to kind of think of the structure of the trailer and, and edit it. And I, I don't really actually start editing until it's probably about a week ago. I started it um, and I, I power through. It takes me two or three days to really kind of piece it together. And then I just kind of think of the the scenes and the themes. And, uh, you know, I, I love to kind of connect things where I can to sort of like you know, even though the, all these games have different storylines, sort of what are some themes or some lines of dialogue that make sense? Um, and this obviously the the theme of the Radiohead song of, you know, trying and optimism. It's sort of like, are there scenes in these games that kind of lean into that? Um, and so that's, I don't know, it's a fun process for me. So I kind of pull together all these different scenes and I really then kind of figure out like the narrative through the piece of where you're going to hear Tom's lyrics and where you're going to hear dialogue and then kind of the ordering of that. And once you have kind of a layout of that, then I go back in and kind of figure out scenes or B-roll. And then we got to work with the game companies because oftentimes we need to get like the dialogue um, from the game without the sound effect or music in it. So even though I've captured things, I have to go back to the game teams and ask for certain scenes and footage. So um, everyone's really supportive and collaborative with that. Uh, and then, yeah, we, we work on it. We work on the sound mix and elements like that. And it's, it's, it's a really fun process. And I was yeah really proud of the trailer we did this year. And every year we've done some great pieces. So thank you for saying that you liked it. Um, means a lot to me to make that. And as I said, it's something I don't really have time to do, but I make the time because it, it helps me get in the headspace of hosting the show for all you guys. So anyways, long winded answer, but thank you for asking about the trailer. Um, let's see. Um, great questions. Um, Jeff, around two to three years ago, you showed that you had a soundboard at the ready. Can you play with it? Yeah, I still have it right here, I think. Hold on. World premiere. There you go. There's the world, world premiere. premiere. Got all these little Exclusive. Things. There you go. It's still here, right? Now comes the fun part. Oh, there's Mark Cerny. If it's not fun, why bother? There's Reggie. Yes, yeah, so I still got my soundboard right here. I just haven't used it. I haven't updated. I think these are all the sounds from like 2020 still. Um, good question, though. Um, let's see. Was it hard keeping the Elden Ring trailer under wraps? How many people knew about it? So you're talking about the um, Summer Game Fest, I guess, Elden Ring trailer. Uh, yeah, we have a great team, uh, you know, that helps us keep secrets. Uh, there's a tight-knit group of people that are involved in that. Obviously, the game companies are involved, too, in, in helping keep those secrets, and we're only kind of one piece of the puzzle. Uh, but, yeah, we, we love to hopefully surprise people. Uh, you know, in this world, it's very hard 
when you know all it takes is one stray tweet from someone somewhere in the world that you know something gets out or a store page goes up or a wish list so we live in fear every morning especially in the days leading into the show that you know something's going to show up on the internet and spoil some element of the show we've been relatively lucky knock on wood that uh that doesn't happen but um yeah we, we take you know the security of the show and the assets very seriously um and that's something you know we want to surprise everyone right it's fun to kind of watch it all and and uh I don't know. Hope, we've had a good run, so hopefully we'll continue this year. But um, thank you for the question. Um, let's see. Uh, am I excited for the trailer for the next GTA? Yes, I'm, I cannot wait. That's uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, I think it's 6 a.m. here in L.A. So, uh, yeah, kind of insane how quickly it's coming up. But, yeah, I mean, you know, there's Grand Theft Auto is uh, unlike any other franchise out there um you know it's so special when when rockstar does a game i always say there's sort of rockstar years at the game awards when we get you know a rockstar game comes out because it's it's incredible what that that team does and of course the the pressure they feel around that game is is so immense right i mean the next gta the the bar is so high and sam hauser and the team there i think always uh you know, always push the push the medium forward so i can't wait to sort of see i mean obviously there's been you know lots of stuff on the internet over the years and you know the unfortunate leak and it was a year ago or something um of some stuff so yeah i mean i think everyone's curious like what is it going to be and i think about you know just we we're talking about the trailer i'm like what's the song going to be and what's the tone of it and things like that how long is it going to be so um yeah i'm very very excited i mean it's a great it's a great week for games i mean you know that's hitting there's all the fortnite stuff that's dropping you probably saw that with like lego fortnite and the racing game and the music game uh, game awards and you know I just I don't know why it ended up this way that everything is kind of all happening this week um, around game awards and I think it's awesome um, that there's so much stuff happening uh, and it really is becoming kind of this like week for and again wasn't necessarily fully coordinated that it was all going to kind of land this way but it's just how it all happened uh, in December uh, in our show on Thursday so uh, yeah to answer your question yes I will be like you uh, you know up at 6 a.m. on uh, on Tuesday watching and I encourage all you guys to watch it too um, really really excited and you know Rockstar has been uh, an incredible supporter of what we've done with Game Awards I don't think I would the Game Awards would not exist without the support of, of Rockstar and Sam and that team uh, really believing in the idea of uh, the Game Awards back in 2014 so um, they are one of the companies that continually pushes our our industry forward, as I said, and I, I just cannot wait to uh, to learn more about that. So yes, I'm I'm very excited. Um, how many global premieres can we expect? I don't know what a global premiere is versus a world premiere or a first look. Um, I don't know. I think it's similar to past years. I mean, you know, we have tons of new games being announced in the show as well. So it also depends on kind of how you define a world premiere. I, I said I think like last week or something. I was on one of these chats. And I said we were getting rid of the world premiere card. And then everyone lines like, oh, he said there's no world premieres left in the show. They're not doing that anymore. And it's like, we have lots of world premieres. We're just not putting the card up. Um, and that's the same thing because I kind of thought it got sort of devalued at some point of like, what's a world premiere versus a first look versus a global announcement versus an update. So we're just kind of showing a bunch of things in the show. But yes, I mean, the majority of things are, are pretty new. Um, and then there'll be, you know, updates and, and trailers for existing games as well. Um, but I don't, know, I don't have a number for you because then someone's going to sit there with their scorecard of like, oh, it's number eight. And he said there were 10 or something. So there's lots of stuff. Don't worry. Um, how long will the show be give or take? Um, I think it'll be similar to last year. Obviously, last year, you guys probably remember Chris Judge was up there and it, it had a long acceptance speech that pulled uh, threw things off. But yeah, it'll be similar to kind of past years where it's sort of, you know, two and a half, three hours probably um, in terms of length. So I can't remember what last year's show was, but not appreciably longer or shorter than last year, hopefully. But you never know what's going to happen in terms of uh, speeches and other things like that. So it's a bit of an accordion. Um, do I do any streams after the show? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I get pretty tired. I the, Twitch is doing a post show after the show that will stream, and I think I'll be popping on that at some point. Um, I may do a stream next weekend with you guys. It's just sort of, it's a it's an emotional journey doing these shows, so we'll see how I'm feeling, what's going on, but um, I will definitely, I, I don't know if I'll do any this week either, because we're going to be pretty busy with rehearsals, but tonight I was like, got a few minutes, so let me pop on by, um, which was good. Um, let's see... Yeah, someone's asking about the soundboard. I'm so far behind. I'm still having questions. We're like, I did the soundboard. Sorry. 
Um, any major triple A reveals? Yes, I think that's fair to say. Um, you know, we've got uh, we've got some cool indie stuff too, though. Big, you know, big franchises showing things as well. Um, it's a cool hodgepodge of games, and it's really important to me that we celebrate smaller teams as well inside of our show and give them a platform. Uh, you know, again, we have the biggest franchises in the world. We'll do things in the Game Awards. But also, I think it's it's imperative because we know we're going to have this audience that we can support a lot of smaller teams uh, and fully independent teams. And, you know, obviously this year there's been a lot of conversations about, you know, the the role of big publishers in the industry. And, you know, uh, I think this is... It's a great opportunity, I think, to show the power of independent studios and creators to build things as well in our show. So it's a, it's hopefully it's a, it's a balanced mix between all the different types of games and things like that. But yes, there definitely are some, you know, big triple A, what you would say triple A, or don't people say quad A now or something like that? It's so silly. I, I never knew what the triple A term really means. But yes, major publishers, big budget titles will absolutely be revealing things um, at the show. Um, Let's see. Um, if you can tell us what game is leading the votes for Game of the Year. Uh, no, I don't know that, actually. Uh, the voting goes on through uh, Wednesday at 6 p.m. The fan voting does. Um, so that's when things close and when things sort of officially um, get settled. Uh, we don't really reveal the voting. Um, we had done that last year in the player's voice Uh category remember we had like these bar charts that sort of shit and it just it just created so much kind of like drama and tension online that we said this year we're just not going to do that we're just going to let people vote so tomorrow uh tomorrow's monday right yeah my days are screwed up but tomorrow we're going to announce the five final nominees for player's voice and then you guys will get to pick that winner and that'll go on through wednesday night so that category you'll find out the five uh, nominees tomorrow morning good question um Let's see. Uh, is the winner for Game of the Year already decided? Uh, good question. So, no, not fully. Um, we have a jury, as you guys probably know, of 120-plus global media outlets that vote on the nominees and winners, and their ballots have been cast um, for that, and that's 90% of the vote. Um, so that's been done, but the public vote, which is the other 10%, which you guys are participating in, hopefully, on our website, um, as I said, that goes on through Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific. And, you know, depending on sort of the the races, that can have an impact on the winner, especially, you know, obviously in, in close races, um, that fan vote can really matter, and the Player's Voice Award is 100% fan voted. So those are ones we won't know until uh, Wednesday in terms of how things really settle. So, um, yeah, that's that's sort of the process and how it goes, and, and then Wednesday night things get finalized, and then Thursday's a live show. Um, thoughts on Harmonix releasing a game within a game? Yeah, that's the uh, the Fortnite Festival, which is cool. I'm... I'm Interested to play that. Uh, you know, we, I think we, I, I don't know if you guys played the um, the Big Bang Fortnite event. I did yesterday. Um, and we got a little bit of that, you know, I think what they call the note highway in the M&M bit where you were kind of tapping to the beat. Um, so I assume that's kind of what it's going to be, very much like Rock Band, uh, which is cool. I mean, I loved Rock Band back in the day. Uh, you know, I had all the, all the plastic and the instruments. I think I even had the stage kit, which was the kind of like smoke machine thing you could get. Um, so we'll see. I, I'm interested to see what the game is. Uh, you know, beat matching, I'm not sure in 2023 um, on a controller or a keyboard how that will play out. But Harmonix, you know, they're kind of the masters of that music game world. So I'm very curious to see kind of what they do with it. But I haven't played it, so I'm not really sure um, what's happening. Jeff, have you chosen the sneakers you'll wear? Well, good question. I did have a, a wardrobe fitting. Um, just the other day, and there, I think there are two or three potential sneakers I could wear. There's like a blue one, there's like a black one, there's another one, so I'm undecided about the sneakers. I should have like a sneaker pole or something. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Um, is there any chance that one of the announcements during the TGA is for a highly hyped game? Very hard question to answer. Uh, yes, I'm sure there's a chance. It depends on what a highly hyped game is to you, but maybe we will deliver for you. Maybe we will disappoint you. That's the problem with all these things is like you probably have a game in your mind and you're like, if you talk about that one, that's going to mean everything to me. And I don't know what that game is, so it's hard to say if it's going to be there or not. Um, let's see. Um, is there anything you want to add to future Game Awards shows or do you think TGA has achieved its final form, so to speak? 
definitely hasn't achieved its final form. Uh, I think that's going to kind of continue to evolve in the um, in the coming kind of months and years, honestly. Uh, but what we do at the show, I always want game awards to be evolving. We tried that the Fortnite uh, vote in Fortnite experience, which was hugely successful. There have been millions of people that have been in that experience, and I thought that was really cool and something new and unique. So, yeah, every year we want to do something different with the show and kind of continue to evolve it um, for sure. So, good question. Um, let's see, what is my personal game of the year? That's a hard question to answer. Uh, just because I haven't played everything, so I feel like the minute I kind of give a preference then, um, you know, people think that I am know what's happening with the show, or I, I, I rig it. Um, sorry, I'm tired. Uh, so I, and I, I don't, I actually don't really have a personal game of the year. It's not a cop-out. I don't know that I have one game that I feel so strongly about that is my game of the year. It's been a really awesome year for games and lots of great things, and I think multiple games could win this year, and I'd be very happy for them. Um, there's some years where, you know, I, I have a strong preference towards one game or not, but this year I think it's been, you know, they're, Legitimately, out of the six Game of the Year nominees, you know, I think any of them could win, and that's not the case every year. Um... Oh, uh, co-streaming. Good question. So, yeah, uh, if you sign up for co-streaming, we're going to be sending out an asset kit, I believe, tomorrow uh, to get you ready for the uh, the live show, which is on Thursday. So, yes, you're free to co-stream it on Twitch. You may also see that um, we have the uh, the Twitch Predicts Game Awards uh uh, CoStream extension that's live on this channel right now. I think on this side of the screen you can click on it, or if you're on mobile, it's below the fold. But yeah, you should also play that. Um, and yeah, we'll have CoStreaming on Twitch. You can CoStream it. Uh, there's also a Warframe Twitch drop as well if you watch more than 30 minutes of the show. So um, lots that you can do um, on Twitch with CoStreaming. Um, CoStream pack will be sent out tomorrow. I just answered that. It's all working out. Um, let's see. Lots of requests for games and music performances. I cannot say anything right now, but stay tuned. Um, yes, given the controversy around the best indie game this year, is there any chance you will more clearly and precisely define criteria for various categories? Yeah, I mean, I th there was a bunch of conversation last week, I think after the stream that I sort of talked about, you know, what the definition of an indie game is or not. And yeah, I think it's absolutely something we will look at uh, moving forward of sort of what the definition uh, is of that. Um, I think the thing is the discourse is that it's it's not a black and white situation of sort of how you define an independent game. Um, and, and again, people are like, that's a cop-out. It's like, you know, the question is, is it based on budget? Is it based on team size? They're often independent studios that have other financing sources. So if you have a venture capital firm, for instance, like backing your indie game, um, is that truly independent? If you have, uh, you know... Uh, a Chinese publisher like a Tencent or NetEase involved is that independent? Um, so yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a discussion to absolutely have, and we will evolve our thinking on that. Um, so it's not to say it will always be that way, um, and I think it's also you know getting the the jury and the judges and everyone kind of to talk about um, what the definition would be for that. So yes, I think it's definitely something that we will you know continue to evaluate and look at. Um, Moving forward, as I said, it's 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 a challenging thing because even in like the best independent category this year, there are a few games that um, you know are 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 questionable about sort of like the definition of sort of is it you know is it truly independent in the sense of you know independence of like a lone individual or a small team bootstrapping a game um, and shipping it versus someone that has an external source of financing, whether that's a big publisher, a small publisher, a just, you know, a loan that they get from someone. So again, I we're not going to solve it in the next couple of days, but yes, it's absolutely something that we're going to think about moving forward of, of that definition. Um, and I think everyone would agree the definition of independent is challenging to really define. I'm curious if you guys want to put in chat of like how you would define it. Um, but again, I think there's different points of view on that. I totally get the the feedback around sort of the Day of the Diver game. Um, and that, you know, is that independent or not? Um, so yeah, I think it's something that absolutely like we are going to continue to think about moving forward. Um, let's see. Any Japanese studios with reveals? Yes. Um, have I chosen my sneakers? I answered that. Um, we're not doing the shows in IMAX uh, this year, unfortunately. That program kind of ended, but it was really cool, and I'd love to do it again in a future year. Um, 
Am I excited for the next Nintendo console? Sure. I, I yeah, I, I'm very excited. I don't know much about it, but I'm you know excited to say anything Nintendo does is fantastic. I mean, it's got you know they got two Game of the Year nominees this year. I think they're the yeah they are the only first party or any company that has two Game of the Year nominees. So yeah, you cannot mess with Nintendo. Um, and I'm very excited to learn uh, what they've got. Um, do I ever think about retirement? Sure. Yes, I do. Um, not going to retire before Thursday, but, um, stay tuned. Thank you for thinking of me. You think I should retire? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm not sure. Um, it's the 10th anniversary. Uh, what are you feeling on it? Well, I'm feeling really lucky and honored that we get to do this show, uh, and that you, you watch it and support us and watch even a stream like this to talk about it. So, um, yeah, I, I feel incredibly lucky. I, I feel, uh, a sense of obligation to the game industry to do a good show for everyone. And, you know, for us, we're so honored that all these developers, you know, spend so much time putting together these trailers and working on their games to show up at the Game Awards. And we just want to do right by the people that are a part of the show. Um, and it's a tremendous honor that we get to reveal these things with game teams. So um, I want to do right by them. I want to do right by you and, and the people watching that they feel like it was worth their time and they weren't like, well, that show was a waste of my time or it wasn't good. Um, so, you know, every year is different and I never quite know what the reaction is going to be. Maybe people will love the show. Maybe people won't. Um, you know, we had a great show last year. I was really happy with it. Um, this year, hard to say, right? I mean, it may be great. And part of it's also just like the moments in the show, the, the speeches and the reactions to things. Those are the things you can't predict or engineer really. So it's just kind of in the live moment. It's, it's either going to feel great or it's going to feel okay or, Something's going to surprise us in a good way of, you know, we didn't think that game was going to be big, but it's going to pop off on the internet. And that's, that's what makes the magic of this live show. And I really think what separates it from a lot of these video events is that there's a live audience there. Everyone's watching. It's, it's this community that's all together to celebrate games. And we come from, you know, very different, diverse backgrounds. And, and, and that's what's cool about this show is that everyone's watching it together. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just do the best show we can and hopefully people like it. Um, let's see. Um, any big streamers I would like to collaborate with? I don't know. Who should we collaborate with? You tell me. Um, Gonzo's going to be at the Game Awards. Yes, he will. Um, let's see. I'm new to the Game Awards. How do you vote? If you want to vote, you can go to thegameawards.com. You can vote on our Discord server. Um, but yeah, voting is open through Wednesday, uh, December 6th at 6 p.m. Pacific. So you still got some time to go vote. Um, yeah, Lethal Company has been amazing to see the, you know, the success of that. Um, I, it, what's cool about our show is that you know, games in the future can also be nominated. It's not like it's, you know, missed the... I mean, I didn't get nominated, obviously, this year, but in future years, it could continue to grow. And, you know, I look at some of these games that, you know, Cyberpunk, right, had a had a terrible launch a few years ago, and it's come back, and Phantom Liberty came out, was great, and that's, you know, nominated, I think, three or four times at the show. So, um, obviously, Lethal Company's had a great launch, but... Uh, what I'm saying is that I think there are games like No Man's Sky, a good example of other games that can can get nominated multiple years and come back again and do even better in later years than they did the first year. So yeah, Lethal Company for sure I think has an opportunity, especially if they keep the game up and, and keep building on it in uh, in 2024. Um, Jeff, will we have a surprise reveal? Let's hope. But ask me that again when the show is live and I'll be able to tell you. Um are there any demos being announced at the show? I believe so. I think so, yeah. Um, would you have wanted to include the trailers for Halo Season 2, Fallout? Uh, the, yeah, I, look, it's an interesting question. There's, yeah, CCXP is happening in Brazil. Um, and, yeah, I mean, with all these things, you know, people ask that about GTA, all these other things, it's like, I always equate it to kind of... Uh, you know, same thing happens like in the U.S. at the Super Bowl where they're like a lot of sometimes trailers come out ahead of the game, sometimes during the game. And it's it's like it's just kind of it's a time where a bunch of things are coming out. Um, and again, CCXP and those movies really don't have a lot to to do with the timing of the game or it's just how it works out. So, yeah, uh, you know, it's it's not to say that we're not doing more on on certain things in the show, even if there's things out on on. Um, you know, shows and things like that. Like, I think there's still opportunities to do other things. Um, you know, last, like last year, 
the Last of Us show trailer came out at CCXP, and then we had the cast on stage at Game Awards, um, which was cool. So yeah, there's still ways to kind of link things together. And I don't know, like it's, uh, it's a good question because some people say like, we don't want any live action adaptation shows in the Game Awards. It should just be video games. And so I don't know, it's, it's always like, hard to figure out how that all fits together, but we don't have, you know, room in our show to do everything either. Uh, and so that's why it's, I'm really supportive of like all these other things. Um, and there's like, we're doing a, on our, on this channel, actually we're doing a day of the devs stream and wholesome games on Wednesday. That'll have even more indie games that we'll focus on. So to your question about like halo and fallout, you know, if it works out great. Um, and people always say like, did you want that? And you didn't get it. And it's like, it's really more of a collaborative sort of, process and decision about kind of what works for everyone like our show is very full um and you know it, it doesn't always work out timing wise or people want to do things that are longer than what we can do and that's another thing with our show is like we can't really do like super long gameplay videos and sometimes people come to us say hey we have a 15 minute video for this game and it's like it's not the right venue at game awards to do that so sometimes things just don't kind of work out timing wise as well um around things so yeah that's uh so good question, uh, and there, you know we have conversations with everyone about everything. Um, the Halo show, a couple, I think the season one, we did the first trailer, I believe, at the show. They did the first trailer. I think I, I haven't watched it yet, but I think it was at CCXP yesterday. Um, the Fallout trailer came out, which looked awesome, uh, and, and Jonathan Nolan and Todd Howard are amazing, and so I was excited about that. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's I'm trying to think how to really answer that because everything's circumstance is kind of different. Um, but yeah, we've talked to those folks, and uh, you know. We'll have more to share hopefully soon about kind of like what we might be able to do around that. Um, let's see. Um, are there any esports journalists in the panel? Yes, there are. There's a separate esports jury for the esports um, categories. Um, let's see. Will there be more musical performances this year? More than past years, you're asking? Um, I don't know. I think around the same. The thing this year is very much like we're focused on some really amazing performances kind of inspired directly by games. This is not a year where we're going to have a ton of big, you know, kind of mainstream, uh, you know, artists playing, you know, the latest radio hit and things like that. Like it's very much a, you know, I think that's feedback you guys have always given us is that we want to, you know, you want to see the orchestra performing stuff. You want to see music that really is linked to games. Um, and, you know, not to say that we don't do that stuff some years. It's just this year, I think, is very much a, a year kind of focused on like real video game music with amazing kind of artists around that. Um, but yes, we'll be announcing some stuff this week. I think there'll be some surprises that we won't announce on that front too. Um, but yeah, we definitely have some cool music and big onstage models. Probably our biggest production ever in terms of the Game Awards, the scale of our set and some of the musical things we're doing. It's the most number of people on stage and there's just a lot of stuff happening. So I'm very excited to... Uh, to share some of that stuff with you. I think it's gonna be really, really cool. Um, what's the best part of hosting the Spike VGAs and TGAs respectively? How have they differed? Um, well, that's a good question. So for, for those of you guys who don't know, I worked um, in the television world at a network called Spike TV, uh, which is gone now, but we did an award show there called the Video Game Awards uh, and for about 10 years. And I didn't, I, I, I was a host on the, the network, so I hosted shows around, um, uh, the VGAs, as it was called, and I eventually got to kind of produce and get involved in that, but it wasn't my show. Um, a guy named Albie Hecht, who was the kind of the creator of the Spike TV network, was really the guy that sort of decided he wanted to build that. I had worked on a video game award show when I was a kid called Cybermania 1994. Yes, I'm old. Uh, and so I worked on that uh, way before then. But uh, so, I mean, the main difference is that TGA was really my own thing um, and that, you know, kind of started it. Uh, it's, you know, a show that the really show that I wanted to build and I'm, you know, effectively kind of in charge of it. Um, whereas obviously when I was working at uh, Spike TV, a TV network, I was, you know, I was kind of an employee or a contractor that was working on it. So it was just, you know, other people involved in the mix. And I learned a lot. Like I wouldn't be able to make the shows that I make now without that history of having done the television work. So I'm grateful for the experience I got there um, to meet all these people and learn how to make these shows. But yeah, the difference now is that I can kind of do the show that I want to do um, for better or worse, right? And I get to make a lot of the decisions around kind of the content. And we have an amazing team that works with us to, you know, put this all together. So it's not just me, obviously. But um, yeah, I have a little bit more sort of authority and control, I guess, on sort of how we approach kind of the games and the content we want to do in the show. And I don't always get it right. Um, but, you know, kind of 
that's the main difference is that sort of I'm very much kind of programming it. Um, whereas in the past it was, you know, in the TV days, it's also always different because the, the TV days, it was more about, I think, you know, making a TV show and sometimes that affected kind of the content and the, you know, the, the just different stakeholders. And that's why one reason I wanted to do things on Twitch and YouTube. It's like you guys, you know, are, are the fan base and I like think if we're excited and, and we're happy, then that's kind of what matters most, not this sort of mythical mainstream television viewer that might watch this show. Um, and streaming has grown so much in the past decade that I never kind of want to go back to TV, right? This is, this is, this is my home right here. Um, Okay, I got to go in a minute, guys, because I said I was going to be finished at 6.30, and I'm still here answering questions, but there are so many questions here. Um, are there any giveaways happening during the live show? Yes, we have more giveaways than ever. Um, you know, if you guys want to get some Steam decks, there may be some news on that coming soon. Um, there's some other really cool giveaways and things, so yeah, stay tuned, but um, there'll be lots of news this week about things that will be uh, being given away during the show. Um why is TGA's on a Thursday? How come not a Friday? Is it because of the venue availability? Yeah, this is a good um, question. Um, it's I, I, There's a variety of factors that play into that. It is a little bit about the venue availability. It's also just about the industry availability. Um, you know, I know people in Europe complain that it's late at night um, on a Thursday and why can't you do it on a weekend? It's just how it shakes out. It's it's hard because like when we do, we go to Gamescom in August and we do a show there at eight o'clock in Germany, which is I think 11 o'clock here in Los Angeles and it's a little bit better time, but then it's a bad time for Asian audiences. Um, this, you know, Game Awards is at 4.30 Pacific, which is, you know, 12.30 in, in London and 1.30 in other parts of Europe. So I get that it's late. Um, it's just hard because you can't find one time that works for everyone around the world. Uh, and so that's just kind of where we do game awards. It's a little also odd to like do a big kind of evening award show like in the middle of the day. Um, so I don't know. We, we could change it in the future. With Summer Game Fest, we do earlier. Gamescom, we obviously do earlier because it's in Europe. So um, I wish it could all be one perfect time for everyone. We have a lot of people that watch the show in you know Japan, China, places like that. And, and that works out okay because it's kind of the next morning for them. So yeah, no perfect solve. Um, I totally hear you. And uh, you know if you can't watch it live, there will be video on demand right after the show, so you can wake up and watch it. Um, and then you can fast forward through the pieces you don't want to watch. But hopefully you're going to want to watch it all. Um, how do I stay in good health? Um, great question. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I wish I got more sleep. I have so many things to do. Uh, I just try and lay low and... Uh, focus on the show at hand so we're four days out i, I you know I, I really live off adrenaline honestly um because i get so excited about the show that we're gonna get to put together so um yeah i, I try and try and get, get as much sleep as i can but it's hard this time of year because there's so many things to do um are the giveaways going to be restricted to the u.s good question um some of the giveaways are some are not um so there will be some opportunities for folks in europe and other places so if you stay up late be in the middle of the night, but yes, in Europe there will be opportunities probably to get some stuff. Um, all right. Um, how long is the Game Awards this Thursday? Um, the Game Awards will start at 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. or sorry, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 a.m. GMT, and it'll last, uh, you know, similar to past years, so it's probably around two and a half to three hours. Um, uh, we'll have kind of our our, our opening kind of half hour, uh, and then we'll go right into show stuff. So again, it's, it's, it's a big evening, but a lot of stuff to share with you guys, uh, when it's Kyle Bossman on, um, am I feeling more stressed or excited? I really am excited. Uh, I can't wait to get to the show. You spend all year working on it. And then now we're, you know, we're kind of in the final zone of, you know, figuring things out and, and it's a busy week, but no, I get excited to see our set see people honestly like all these game developers that fly in from around the world to be part of our show i'm so honored that people take the time to fly in and be a part of the show and and celebrate so no i do get very excited i get tired um but uh, you know this is uh, this is what i've always dreamed of doing is making this show for you guys and that's why you know i edit the trailer and i i work so hard on it and our whole team works so hard to really hopefully make a good show for you that um you know celebrates games and is uplifting and that's why i think people tune into this show is to see games and, and celebrate our pastime um, that we all love so much. And that's what we're really focused on. That's kind of our singular focus is like make a great show uh, about video games. Um, 
So yeah, and hopefully you guys agree. I'll put the poll up after and you'll tell me if we did good or bad. And we don't always do great, but I think we did well last year. I think we got an A and I was like, oh, cool. Like maybe it was worth it. But the year before we probably got a B or something. So who knows? Um, but I hope you guys like it. Uh, I will obviously be updating you. I don't know how many, how often I'll be able to stream um, leading into Thursday, but thank you so much for watching this and tuning in and, and being a part of this show. Um, it's, it's, it's an exciting time for games. And I think, uh, I think there's going to be there are a few things when we see these trailers and they come in, I'm like, Oh my God, this is going to be so fun when you guys get to see these games. Uh, so I, I hope that you get inspired and get excited about, you know, where games are going, uh, and where they've been this year. It's been an amazing year for the, the quality of games. And I think this year, game of the year, you know, it's going to be an in incredible, exciting night to see what's going to happen and what's going to win. And, you know, I don't know that there's one game that's going to sweep everything. Right. I mean, I think it's going to be one of these years where, I mean, anything can happen, but I think it's going to be an exciting night to sort of see how the awards all play out. Um, and hopefully get to watch it. So thank you guys for your questions. Thanks for watching. And, uh, I got to get back to work because we have a busy week ahead. Um, we are four days away until the game awards. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, We'll see you guys uh, on social media, but if not, I'll see you Thursday on this very channel for the Game Awards Live. We'll have more lights and more set, and I'll be wearing a fancy suit, but um, same old me. All right, take care, guys. Uh, have a great night, and we will see you, uh, see you online. Bye.